Welcome back to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden mother and crone, looking at ourselves and our world through the lens of the 21st century. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on our fourth episode of Modern Musings. Can you believe it? We're at the whoop, fourth whoop. episode. And wow. I'm here. This is Cindy Murray, and I'm here with Kristen Hessler and Amber Garvin. Hey, guys. And hey. we are so excited to be here. Four episodes in, and we are having so much fun with this podcast. And we're so glad that you came back to join us. We, You are the whole point of us being here. And thank you for continuing to listen. If this is your first uh, listen to our podcast, please feel free to go back and listen from the beginning. All those ep early episodes are still available and will continue to be available. And we don't want you to miss out on any of the great conversations. This week, we are talking about goal planning. And we are goal setter girls. And this episode is one in a series that we're going to do from time to time called goals girl and we're really trying to make better lives for ourselves and kind of manifest and cultivate the best parts of our lives and make changes for the better and really the best way to do that is to make changes by planning you have to set goals. You have to make smart goals. You have to make smart plans and follow through. And so one of the ways that I've been doing this this year is through a product called Power Sheets that is offered by Cultivate What Matters. And I will link that information on the blog. This product was introduced to me from my friend Brandy. And uh, shout out to Brandy. Thank you again. And later by my friend Susan, uh, who introduced me to a podcast. And that's a whole long story. And you can read all about that over on the blog. That's not what I'm here today for. But I wanted to talk about uh, setting goals and using something like a power sheet to set those goals. The thing I love about power sheets is that it has a whole setup system that you do starting in the fall and it's a um, and that's why we're talking about it now and we we kind of introduced some stuff about one little word uh last week or two weeks ago and this is kind of an extension of that uh not from the same manufacturer but it really kind of works with it and we are using these to set goals that help us change, make changes in our lives. And if, if you have goals, goals don't have to be, um, I'm going to climb Mount Everest or I'm going to become the president of the company I work for. Goals can be as simple as I want to lose 10 pounds or I want to get more sleep. Or I want to drink 32 ounces of water per day yes so there's there's all kinds of goals that the goals can be as intense or as small or however however they are for you so whatever goals you're setting this is kind of one of the things that we do instead of making a resolution for new year's we've started doing this and I, this is actually my first year, so I'm really a newbie at doing at using power sheets. And so I am by far not any kind of authority on this, but I will tell you this has made an incredible difference in my life just using the methodology in the power sheets to make these changes. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've lost 40 pounds or whatever by doing it, but it really has changed my outlook on things it's changed my ability to get organized and to get some of my bigger tasks well in hand. And I've mentioned in previous podcasts that I, my mom was living with me for a year and a half. Um, she has dementia and she was not able to live on her own anymore. And so I brought her into my home and I was her primary caregiver and 
then COVID happened and it really put a curtail on my life. And so I really had to look at things a little differently and I had to get a lot more organized to get anything done at all. And some of the things that I've been able to get done in this past year because of the power sheets were to um, list and sell my mom's house, which was a whole ordeal in and of itself. Uh, I got my mom actually moved into a memory care facility where she's getting the care that I was not able to provide for her um, that she needed. And a whole lot of other things, including kind of getting my house a little more organized. So these things uh, and rebuilding my business, that was another one because it was devastated by COVID. And I'm, I'm trying to get that. And even just this podcast, I've used the things I want to do to help me structure um, the building of this podcast. So the way that the power sheets works is that there's a workbook that you buy in the fall and it starts out um, asking you what you want to cultivate. And it's really a, a brain dump kind of page where you just put everything that you can think of into this and you and you'll see this on my blog because I'll share that there with you but um, I just put on there all these different things that I want to travel and I want to clean her house and I want to lose weight and I want to create art and create a cozy home and things so you really just start out by just doing a brain dump and then kind of narrowing down the things that are important to you and this has a lot of you can do a lot of these things on your own, but I like this really structured format to do this in because it actually makes me do the work. Um, I answered a lot of questions about me. It takes you through a lot of um, just questions that like what makes you come alive, what fires you up, um, what do you really want out of your life and things like that. And then you kind of evaluate you, your life. And so it'll ask you about different um, areas of your life, by, like your friends and your family and your spouse and your finances and your career. And, and you kind of rate those on a number scale and talk about what's good and what's bad and how's it going. And these things all lead you to a place where you set your big picture and you figure out what you want to cultivate in your life. And that's the part we can all set goals. I, I've been setting goals and making tasks and, um, you know, breaking down one task into smaller tasks and working on those kind of lists for years and years and years. But what I love about this is that it really helped me explore, which is, my word of the year this year the the different things that meant the most to me and from there determine what I wanted to work on and so I I wound up coming up with a, a, ser a set of eight goals that I wanted to accomplish this year and I started working on those and some of them I've been better at and some of them not so great at but some of them I actually accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and I've moved on to other goals. And that's what I love about this, um, this power sheets is it's designed to work you through and just step you through that process of finding what it is that you want to accomplish, breaking that down into smaller tasks and then helping you learn how to do it. And, so I wanted to open it up to Kristen and Amber. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do planning and goal setting. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today because starting, I will be starting or have started um, my planning for 2022. And I want to know what everybody else is working with. Um, are you doing power sheets? Are you using some other form of goal planning? And um, just kind of what do you get out of it and how is that going for you so far? Well, I can say 
that um, I do not do power sheets. I do like the idea of power sheets. And Krista and I have been talking about in the past that uh, she's going to help me out and get me started on power sheets. I know she's nodding really excitedly because <laughs> that's one of her personal goals is to make me more goal-oriented than I already am. And I feel like I'm getting there, but I need that extra push as far as my goals are concerned. Yeah, I feel like uh, Power Sheets is super helpful because it's almost like having your own personal coach. It is. It really is. It's like having a coach. And um, there's actually a lot of um, bloggers and vloggers out there that have plan with me sessions where they set those. up their power sheets every week or every month and and help you set yours up they just step you through it um i my friend susan watches one um plan with lakin i've watched her a few times and she does one of these live um video casts and they she just works you through it step by step and gives you great tips about how to set your goals and make those plans and not over plan or over commit yourself to too many plans because that's a mistake really that we often do. do. Yeah, I think that's why the power sheets themselves um, with the uh, cultivate what matters, how this makes it very successful is that it's breaking down your goal into mini goals and mini action items so that you're more successful. It's really hard to um, set this goal of climbing Mount Everest, you know, starting January, your expectation is that by the end of the year, you're going to meet the top of the peak, right? And that is an absurd goal if you are inexperienced at that and you don't even know where to start if you don't know about the gear or what it's like breathing the air up there and all of the health issues that people have because of it and what you need to do to get to that part of the world even there's a lot of research and planning and it is something that people make a goal and are successful with it you just have to know how to get started and Power Sheets helps you do that because you write out your goal. You identify what you value, who you are, what's important to you, and ask you all these little questions and you fill them out. And by the time you get to the end, you feel like you really know yourself and you have these clear goals in mind or they're set and you have them broken down into little bitty pieces so that in January you're going to work on this action item in order to get you closer to your goal. And in February, you're going to take this next step. And if you backslide a little bit, it's okay. You put it back on your goal sheet. You uh, reassess a couple of months in so that you can reevaluate your goals and determine if that's exactly the same goal you're going to do or if you yeah, need you to change it. I actually changed mine a couple of times this year because there were goals that I met and I needed to make them bigger. And then there were some that I made too big and I had to make them smaller break them up even further or sometimes you find that a goal once you've been working on it for a few months it you're really not that into it yeah, and so you realize you can, it's not for you yeah. yeah and you can reassess but the I, I really think that it is the the magic of power sheets is helping you break those plans down and that is the key to goal planning uh, and goal setting is to you set your goal and you have to be realistic but also, you need to break it down into the smallest possible pieces. So by breaking it down into the, the smallest thing, it's, it's almost like um, in math when you find the least common denominator and you just keep breaking it down and keep breaking it down until you get to the smallest action steps. And then you determine if that's a daily, a weekly, or a monthly, and you set up these action plans and they call them tending lists. And you have a tending list that you go through and check off as you finish these things. And I think that's the real magic of doing this kind of system for your goal planning because it helps you see that you can't climb Mount Everest until you buy all the gear, 
train for all these months and you're just doing these step these steps these steps these steps the first thing that you do is not go buy all the gear the first thing you do is not to book your flight you know <laughs> to tibet uh you know you're not going to just go climb denali and prep for mount everest so you have to actually find the smaller steps which might be go hike out the hill in your backyard or um go do a bunch of backpacking trips or get some calluses on the bottom of your feet. Yeah. 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 So, um, and that, that really is the, the key to goal setting, goal planning. And that's the only way you're going to really improve yourself by really thinking ahead, planning ahead and manifest, you know, then you can manifest the life that you really want because your life isn't just going to happen to you. It's not. You have to create the life that you want. And that's one of our our big things that we like to talk about is cultivating that life that you want. Right. So the first question actually in the book, it's a wonderfully uh, spiral-bound book that comes out um, before the new year. Yeah, I think it's in September. Yeah. yeah. So So, uh, that way you get plenty of time to work on the first like 50 pages. I know that sounds like a lot at first, but um, there's a lot of space for you to do things like drawing and writing, writing and drawing. And yeah. The, the first uh, question is what do you want to cultivate in the year ahead? Write some thoughts and ideas here. No perfect handwriting needed. Dig in. And so like on mine, I have a ton of things that I wrote down. Um, one of them was purge more things. You know, it wasn't like, it's not a smart goal. We'll probably talk about those later. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just a very vague thing. And then you go and expand upon it. The next question is, you know, kind of asking you, um, you know, a little bit about yourself. What helps you do your best? What makes you feel motivated? How I feel about goals and um, ways that you're encouraged and things you want to be known for. Because when I started this one this year, I didn't realize how much I was really interested in helping other people. I, I mean, being a supervisor where I work and coaching, um, you know, my team, I love doing that. And I love helping my team grow professionally uh, inside and outside of work. Um, We really incorporate everything in our lives. We do a lot of goal setting at work with my team. And I realized that something that I really wanted to be known for was helping others achieve their goals. And I really didn't realize that until like I was actually asked what I wanted to be known for. I had never really thought about that. And so I do have to give a lot of credit for some of the changes that I made this year to some of these questions because it brought a lot of things to light in working uh, these pages. Another one that I loved was what fires me up because obviously things fire you up and, and you recognize them, but do you really sit down and acknowledge what fires you up? Um, obviously making plans and organizing things like I'm acknowledging that more and more this year than ever um you just writing those things out and that's how you pick out your goals because you may think you know every doesn't everyone have like some kind of fitness health fitness uh goal in January that seems about right right but there's other things out there that you may not even realize that you want to have as a goal until you really start to look inside of yourself what is it that you want I like how she also breaks down the areas of your life too in the book so typically people think of health work and financial Right. Yeah, there's those are the most common most goals. common, right? But there are other areas that people might consider having a goal, like spirituality and recreation. That was another one I was really surprised because a lot of people don't set goals for recreation. Yeah, we kind of forget about that until we just go stir crazy and have to escape yeah. somewhere. Yeah, and those are good goals to set because 
recreation is healthy. Getting out of the house is yes, definitely yeah. healthy, even and if it's just going to the store. Yeah, right, and, and self-care is you're, part of that, too. It's self-care. It's mental health, and and that's so important. Um, yeah, I love the way that she divides those up, too, and I love, you know, setting the different um, the different areas of goals and, and different kinds of goals. And, and that has helped me because I don't have to focus on just improving one area of my life. I can improve multiple areas of my life, some of them in big ways and some with just very small tweaks to what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I can just kind of change one little thing like spending 20 minutes a day doing bookkeeping to help me get caught up with the bookkeeping or, um, 30 minutes a day of administration on my travel agency work so that I'm not getting behind on doing things like updating my website or prepping social posts and things like that. So those are some of the, the kind of goals that I had going on this year. Um, and like I said, I, I was very resistant to using this because when my friend Brandy first introduced it to me, I was like, I do not need one more thing to keep track of. Um, cause you look, you look at it and it's, you know, it's 50 pages of prep work just to get started. And then you're setting these goals and you're making these tending lists. And I thought this is going to be so tedious and so horrible. I do not want to do this, but the goals that you set in January you are still doing them now. I am. And that's the big difference between doing a resolution of losing 10 pounds and not having a plan versus setting an intentional plan, living intentionally, setting a goal and following through with it. Because I am still working on things that I set as my intention in January. And I have succeeded in several of those things and very happily so. So I'm, I am so much a proponent of this. That's why I wanted to tackle this topic. Even though I'm a newbie at this, it has made such a profound impact on the way I think about goal setting that I, I felt like it needed to be shared. And this is not a paid sponsorship or endorsement we do not get anything from um cultivate what matters for for doing this we just think it's a really cool product and a really cool system for setting goals and you of course do not have to use something like this to to set goals for yourself but i just i find it so fascinating that it has worked so well and I'm so glad that Brandy gifted me with a, a copy of the book to start with because I probably would have put it off and put it off and put it off and it I would be in the same place I was last year. And I really feel like it has made a huge difference and I credit her and this program for that. So um, I don't know... Um, I don't know what else to share with that because, like I said, I I kind of went over a lot of it on the blog, and um, and I and you can see pictures of some of the things, and I've talked about some of the things that I actually accomplished this year. So, um, Amber, Kristen, do you have anything else to add to this one? I do. Um, if you're interested in anything else that's similar. There are a lot of websites um, and bloggers that have other types of power sheets. And I'm using the quote. She has air quotes that. there. Yeah. So um, actually when Brandy had mentioned the power sheets, I was like, oh, yeah, I do power sheets. But <laughs> I wasn't actually doing the, you know, registered power sheets. I was doing someone else's. I believe it was Laura mom envy laura with mom envy she has a blog it's called mom envy and she does printouts and she has one every year that uh is like a year in review and hers is it's more of not 
necessarily like planning for the future, but recapping. So this time of year, a lot of people are kind of evaluating the end of the year and I had been doing that but obviously it was sometimes just me beating myself up because I wasn't achieving the goals whereas I know at the end of this year I'm going to be making a lot of celebrations because I've met all of my major goals I mean obviously I haven't lost all of the weight that I've been trying to lose that was one of my goals but I'm on a really good uh, start with that and I can say at the end of this year that although I did not cross the finish line on every single goal I am in the race and I'm still running and I'm not in last place and that's that's more than I can say for any other resolution I have ever set in a January ever in my life because how many people start off January I'm January not going to drink or I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to go to the gym every day and I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that and they go for a couple of weeks and then they start petering out and by the time March hits it's back to the same people that are always there and they're just going yep all the machines are free again yes the gym yeah <laughs> so you know it's um like I say, this this has made a huge impact, and I I think it's worth looking into. And we'll talk more about setting goals uh, as Kristen Mincer will talk about setting smart goals on a later goals girl episode. And we're gonna kind of revisit the goal setting and the goal keeping and the planning and all of that stuff uh, throughout the year. So come back for more of those. We've got lots more tips and lots more stuff to cover with that as the year goes by. But uh, that's pretty much it for now. And next week, I am your hostess again, which is kind of funny. Um, I don't usually, We don't usually do them two in a row, but I actually am going to tackle the topic of Christmas cards. So is it a lost art? Or a dying old habit. Aren't those the same thing? Yeah, I guess they are. But <laughs> <laughs> so, but but the question is: is this is this something that's still trending, or is is this kind of going away? And um, do you still do them? We'd like to hear. We're going to put a poll up on the blog, or no, it's on the Facebook page, I believe. And um, we're going to ask everybody in the Facebook group. Um, to answer us. So go over there to that Facebook group, sign in, keep up the conversation with us and give us some, uh, big stars over on the Apple store for our thing. If you like what you're hearing, we want to give a shout out to Red Door Studios and Mark Murray at Creative Audio Tech for all the help with the audio gear and also to john wilson for at rimshot graphics for designing our logo and we'll be seeing you next time have a or we'll, great evening we'll hear from you next yeah, time we'll you'll hear, hear from time. us next time we're gonna yeah, figure yeah. this out yeah we'll, i know we'll eventually I, get it i promise wait till next week to find out what other weird thing we'll say at the end of the <laughs> podcast see you then